Hi, the purpose of this video is to give you a reference that you can look at, um, at your own, on your own time to learn how to use Altium. So we might go over using Altium a little bit in class, but you'll always have this video series to go back and see if there's a step that you forgot how to do, um, or if there's something you think you might have missed, or if you just want to double check that you're doing everything right. We're going to do in this video series, we're going to step through the process of using Altium all the way from configuring the settings of Altium to <coughs> design, to doing a schematic, to doing a board layout, to exporting a board layout for production, to uploading the production file uh, at, a, at sort of a nearby uh, PCB manufacturing facility. Um, <coughs> now, we're going to start, this first video is basically just going to be configuring Altium, and this probably won't apply to you. Um, this is also, in case you're watching this and you might not be from Western Washington University, this video series is intended for students at Western Washington University using uh, the software systems that we have. If you're not from Western and you're using this, it'll all still apply, but things just might be slightly different for you. Also, and this is using Altium version 17. If you're using version 16 or 15 or 14, a lot of these things will be the same, but some of the buttons and things might look a little bit different, so keep that in mind. Um, so to begin, we're going to just open up Altium. Um, and one thing we're going to do is we're going to check to see if the settings are all correct. Um, typically, the easiest way to see if the settings are correct is if you're at Western, um, is to go File, New Project, and see that there's this two-layer PCB project template WWUEE. Um, there's a couple reasons why this wouldn't show up. One is if your settings aren't correct. The other is if you don't have... Um, the R drive map to your computer. So you're going to have to have the R drive on the local network map because it has the resources that this thing pulls these from. Um, so check either of those if you don't see it. But one of the easiest things to do is just change the settings or make sure the settings are all in there. So to do the settings, <clears throat> what we're going to do is we're going to go, we're going to click the little DXP button here and we're going to go preferences. Um, and then we're going to click load and <clears throat> to find these we go to the R drive Altium um, templates, preferences and options, and then it's this Altium version. The one from 2015 is the one to use. You're going to click OK, um, and then it's going to give you a few warnings. And it's always good after you update these settings. It warns you that some of the menus might not be right unless you restart. It's always good to restart just to be sure. So after these settings take place, we're going to, after they take effect, we're going to restart the software. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and close it and then open it right back up. Okay, so now our settings should all be correct. Um, and if you if you install Altium at home, and you, first of all, you have to make sure you connect to the uh, server through the Cisco software. You have to VPN into the university because that's the way you'll get access to the license server. And then you should map the R drive and then after installing the software and doing these settings, everything should work for you. <clears throat> so one thing to do is, um, if we're gonna we're gonna start off by creating a project, and uh, to do that, we're gonna go new project. We're gonna click the two layer PCB project template WWEE. We're gonna give this project a name. And where we save this project, um, for right now it doesn't matter, but it's always a good idea for you to keep it stored somewhere where it'll be backed up and you'll have access to it, especially if this is your senior project. You're going to want to make sure it's in a folder like your student share folder, your student share drive. Also, it's always a good idea to make backups of your Altium uh, projects and to periodically sort of archive your Altium projects in case something catastrophic happens and you have to go back and pull an older version. <clears throat> there is version control with Altium, but we don't really use it for the most part. Um, and so you kind of have to go with just sort of an old, you know, every once in a while, maybe once a week or so, just zip up your entire folder and save it somewhere. So we'll create that new project. And you'll see after we create the project, there's two documents that are produced by this project creation. There's a schematic document, and it has the Western logo here. And then there's a PCB document. So both of these right now are completely blank. 
Um, and what we're going to do, the general process when using Altium is to design with a schematic, uh, import those changes from the schematic onto the board, and then do your physical design on the board. And the idea behind Altium is you have a schematic which has all of your sort of symbolic connections. So it has your symbols, blocks that represent circuits, um, and it shows the electrical connections between those components. So, uh, And then the board side is the actual physical board layout. So that's actually where the copper goes, where the holes go, things like that. What links the two is the actual components. So the components, each component will have um, both a representation as a schematic and a representation as a physical layout. And so the software knows when you're using this component, it knows, <clears throat> you know, when you connect something on the schematic, it knows that whatever logical pins you connected on the schematic, those physical pins have to be connected on the board. And the software keeps track of those mappings between um, the symbolic pins and the physical pins on the board side. So it does that work for you. That's part of the automated process of doing this board design. So, but before we get into that, one thing you'll notice if you look at the schematic is you see um, there's these, down in the bottom right corner, we have this kind of legacy um, design info here. So for each sheet, we have a title, um, the title for the sheet, the engineer, the draftsman. A lot of this stuff, if you, in the case, in this case, the engineer and the draftsman are probably going to be the same person. That's you. Um, if you were working at a company, it's very likely you would have a separate person engineering the design and then somebody drafting the design. So it's a way to keep track of um, who did what, which version it is, when it was done. Um, and you know, in the case where you have a, a design with multiple schematic sheets, these sheets would also be a way of sort of identifying what components of your overall circuit are represented on each sheet. So let's look at how to add some of these terms in here. A lot of these are global settings for our project. So a lot of these things like the global title, the engineer name, the draftsman name, these are all things that are settings set for the project. The other things like the sheet title, that's a setting set for the sheet. And so we'll find access to both of these in two different locations. Let's start with the global things. If we go to um, so make sure I don't mess it up. Design, I think it's document, nope. Oh, no, here we go. Project, project options, yeah. If we go to project options, it pops open a lot of different options. A lot of these things we're never going to touch, um, but some of the stuff we do care about is down in this parameters tab. So if we go in the project options window, if we move, go to the parameters tab, we'll see all of these things that were listed here. So in this case, the global draftsman name, we'll just do my name. The global engineer name, we'll also do my name. The global date, we'll do today's date. The global title. And the revision number in this case, we'll just do 0, 0.0.1. 0 .1. Okay, <clears throat> and you'll see once we update those things, most of the things on this sheet now update based on those global values we added. What's missing here is the sheet title. So there's a few different ways we can change the sheet title. Um, one thing we can go is we can go to um, document options here, I think, yeah. <clears throat> so we can go document options uh, in the upper menu, which will we can then go down to the sheet title here and change that. So we will call this, because we're putting all the components for this design on one schematic, we'll just call this something like unified design. Okay, now there's another way we could have gotten it. We could have right clicked in the schematic and gone options, um, document options. We could have accessed it this way. One of the things about Altium that you'll notice is there's lots of different ways to do the exact same thing. So just because you found something one way doesn't mean it's the only way to get there, but it can be a little confusing sometimes because the same information will be presented in possibly two or three different formats. So it'll be hard to tell that you're looking at the same thing, you're changing the same parameter when it's presented in different ways. <clears throat> and you'll see a lot more of that once we get to the actual PCB document. Okay, so that's good enough there. So we've sort of set these defaults here. There's one more thing I want to do, I want to make sure of, and that's 
um, to set grids. Grids are really important when working with LTM to keep things clean. If we keep things clean and organized when we start using LTM, as we start building our design, it's going to help us so we don't later on have to go clean things up. One of the easiest ways to clean things up is to just set a coarse grid. So in this case, if we look down at this bottom left corner here, we see this grid 1. What that means is that this is grid is on the finest resolution here. If we put a component down, we'd basically be able to move the component anywhere. It wouldn't snap to this coarse grid shown here. If we press the G key, see pressing the G key once caused the grid to change to 5. Pressing it again caused it to change to 10. And so that's going to, as we increase that grid, we're going to increase the coarseness with which we can position things. I like to keep for a schematic, I like to keep it at grid 10. It just keeps things nice and orderly. And it's really important on schematic because if things are off, if you have a fine grid resolution, it's very easy to have something that looks like there's a connection, but when there's not really a connection. So it might look like two things are connected, but really they're just very close but not actually touching. So let's keep it with that coarse grid spacing for now. We can do the same thing just quickly popping over the board. When we're in the board uh, menu, we can change the grid there by again pressing the G key. And it pops open a window for either setting a grid in mils or in millimeters. So you might set it something to 10 mil. And you can see that grid if you zoom in. Okay, so for now, that's all we're going to do for this video. Let's save. File, save all. Um, and then we'll come back to this next time in the next video. Thank you.